Chakwela spoke in the local language Chichewa, saying police should understand that during times of grief, some people are likely to say various things and do other reactions in a disorderly manner. Chakwela said in times like this, the police should exhaust all means of bringing peace and comfort to grieving people before making arrests. He says that he is aware that he does not have the constitutional powers to order the police how to conduct their duties, but he is pleading with the Inspector General of Malawi Police to ensure that the police service operates on behalf of the people and not as a force to intimidate and punish citizens. The Inspector General of Malawi Police Service, Merin Yolam, and Minister of Homeland Security, Ken Zekari Ngoma, who were present during the televised ceremony, were seen nodding in agreement to President Chakwela's remarks. Malawi's Vice President, the late Saulos Chirima, and eight others were killed in a plane crash on June 10 in northern Malawi, which aviation experts in the country connect to bad weather. However, two weeks later, police arrested human rights activist Boni Kalindo, lawmaker Kamlepo Kalua, and faith leader Reverend Kondwani Gondwe over the alleged circulation of criminal audio content relating to the cause of the plane crash. Aviation experts from Germany and the Malawi Defense Force are investigating the cause of the plane crash, which some people suspect was a planned accident. Michael Kayatsa is executive director for the Center for Human Rights and Rehabilitation. He told VOA that Malawi should repeal some provisions of its cyber crimes legislation, which he says are prone to abuse. One of the provisions says that the government can restrict online communication, but also it criminalizes the communication that is deemed to be not in the public interest. These are the provisions which can easily be abused. And what the government is doing is actually abusing those provisions. Kayatsa says the legislation contradicts the tenets of any democratic society. And in a democracy like we are in right now, to be using those archaic and, and the draconian laws is actually um, a, a move in the wrong direction. People should be free to express their opinions. The Malawi Law Society says although the arrests were a violation of human rights, to repeal the country's cybercrime legislation based on the people's emotions would be wrong. Its president, Patrick Mpaka, says through local media that instead the law enforcement agents should work to familiarize themselves with the law to avoid abusing it. For VOA Africa, I am Lamek Masinam. A Kenyan court has ruled that the fatal shooting of a Pakistani journalist Al Shad Sharif by a police officer in 2022 was arbitrarily and unconstitutional. High Court Judge Stella Motuku on Monday found that the killing that happened on October 23rd, 2022, violated the scribe's right to life right to equal benefit and protection of the law, and the right to dignity, among others. Consequently, the judge ordered the government of Kenya to pay the family Kenyan shillings, 10 million, about US dollar 78,000 as a compensation. However, she suspended the monetary benefit for 30 days to allow the government to appeal against the decision. In view of the analysis above, I find that the respondents jointly and severely through their actions violated the rights of the petitioners. Judge said, adding that Shalifu's family should be updated on the status of the investigations and appropriate action to be taken against the police officers found Carl Prebo. The 46-year-old Pakistani journalist had fled to Kenya in July 2022 on a self-imposed exile to avoid arrest after allegedly criticizing the country's powerful military rule. He was shot dead at Tinga area in Kajiado County in what the police later described as a case of mistaken identity. Sharif was a passenger in a Toyota Land Closer number plate KDJ 200M, and the police claimed they opened fire on the car while trailing a different vehicle 
Mercedes Benz Sprinter van number plate KDJ 700F, which had allegedly been stolen from Pangani a few kilometers from Nairobi's central business district. The following day, the judge said Kenya's Inspector General of Police admitted that his officers had fatally wounded Arshad Sharif in a case of mistaken identity. The widow, Mrs. Javeria Sidikwe, sued Attorney General Justice Moturi, Inspector General Police Jaffet Kome, Director of Public Prosecutions Lenson Ingonga, and the Independent Policing Oversight Authority, among others, accusing them of delaying investigations into the shooting and keeping the family in the dark concerning the probe. The court ruled that Sharif was subjected to torture as his life was cut short without a just cause. Justice Mutuku further directed the police to conclude the investigations into the killing and that appropriate action to be taken against the officers found culpable. The judge said no person should be deprived of his or her right to life unless as stated in the law and the police should not use force unless it is necessary. She added that Sharif had full and equal enjoyment of his rights in Kenya, including the right of freedom and security. The judge noted that the widow wrote several letters to the government and its agencies on the status of the investigations, but no response was forthcoming. Justice Imutuku added that all the government agencies sued in the matter, including the National Police Service, cannot escape responsibility as they have the mandate of upholding the rule of law, good governance, and the constitution. Sidiquez lawyer Dwedri Ochiel adds that the use of wrath of force against Sharif by shooting him dead was arbitrarily disproportionate unlawful and unconstitutional. The widow revealed in the petition that Sharif used to provide for his two wives, five children, and his mother. She moved to court saying she was apprehensive that the failure to investigate, arrest, or prosecute the police officers who caused the death of her husband was a ploy cover up the matter and a violation of the Constitution.